current COVID situation, the number of fake Ayurvedic doctors in the country has increased. In the meantime, a new syrup which is said to be made using Ayurvedic medical techniques is now a hot topic in the country. However, similar to Western medicine, Ayurvedic medicine also spreads in a wide range from simple to complex medical interventions. One of the techniques used in Ayurveda for production of drugs or pharmaceutical processing is Rasa Shastra, which is known as Ayurchemistry in English. This means the science about mercury. This includes mineral and metal based Ayurvedic formulations. For this, a wide variety of minerals and metals are used where mercury is the major element among them. These elements are known as Rasa Dravyas in Rasa Shastra. They have the following three characteristic attributes. They are instant effectiveness, requirement of very small doses, and extensive therapeutic utility irrespective of constitutional variation. There are evidences that this science was originated even before the origination of Ayurveda. Nagarjuna Shastra is considered as the father of this science. Rasa Shastra is not only limited to Ayurveda. In the past, there are evidences that people who had studied in depth on this science were capable of converting non-precious metals to precious metals like gold and silver. Now let's focus on what are the other metals and minerals that we can use in Rasa Shastra. According to Rasa Shastra, they could be divided into few categories. First one is Rasa. This is where Mercury belongs. Second one is Maharasa, which includes Mica, Tourmaline, Copper Pyrite, Iron Pyrite, Asphalt, Blue Vitriol, Bismuth, Zinc O. Then, Uparasa. It includes sulfur, hematite, green vitriol, alum, opiment regler, stipnites, and then sadhana rasa, which includes glands and hairs of Malotus philippinensis, arsenic, ammonium chloride, cowry, amber, red oxide of mercury, cinnabar, and lithage. It will surprise you to know that even substances like gold, silver, copper, iron, lead, tin, zinc, these are known as Dhatu. Even various types of gems are also commonly used in Rasa Shastra. They belong to the category known as Ratna. Here, gems like ruby, pearl, coral, emerald, topaz, diamond, sapphire, zircon, cat's eye are used. As Uparatnas, tourmaline, aventurian feldspar, sunstone, moonstone, lapis lazuli, garnet, turquoise, etc. are used. We all know that above mentioned substances, mainly mercury, lead, tin, are toxic to human body. Now, you may be thinking, if so, how could we make medicine out of them? For that, these elements should be subjected to a complex procedure to remove their toxicity and make them favorable for human use. This procedure is known as purification or shodhana. Objectives of the shodhana process thus can be summarized as follows. Removal of visible foreign material like dust, gravel, etc. Elimination, attenuation or pacification of harmful biological activity of the drug. Modification of undesirable physical and chemical properties of the drug. Enhancement of intended therapeutic action. Preparation of the material for further processing. The objective of calcination or marana is to obtain powder of the material termed as basma which is a very soft powder form. Now, you all may realize the importance of production and analysis of these medications under a qualified Ayurvedic doctor. If this process is not done properly, the ultimate result will be worse. If the medication is in the powder form, there are multiple methods explained by the ancestors related to Ayurveda to analyze whether that is suitable for the human body or not. The first one is Rekha Purnatva. 
The basma is said to possess this characteristic when particles of basma are fine enough to settle in the ridges of the fingers when rubbed between thumb and the index finger. Second one is Varitharatva. The basma, when sprinkled, should float on the surface of the water. Third one is Apurna Bhavatva. Basma, when mixed with the mixture of jaggery, fruits of abras precatoris lin, ghee, honey and borax and subjected to intense heating in a crucible should never lead to reappearance of the source mineral or metal from which the basma is prepared. However, the temperature should not be allowed to exceed the temperature used to prepare the basma being tested. Fourth one is Nirutatva. The basma is placed in a crucible along with a piece of silver metal weighing equal to the basma. The crucible is subjected to heating at a temperature equal to the temperature used for preparation of basma for a period of 3 hours. The heating should not cause any increase or decrease in the weight of the piece of silver. All the above steps should be followed in order to analyze the metallic powder. If you fail in at least one step, you have to restart the process from the beginning from the first step. With the development of modern technology, people have questioned about the safety of using these kind of medications. And in those situations, it has proved under proper Ayurvedic guidelines that if you use these medications in the correct method, in correct dosage, under the guidance of a proper registered Ayurvedic doctor, they do not cause any sort of harm to the body. These medications are mainly used for conditions that cannot be cured by normal drugs or for severe complicated disease conditions. For example, these medications can be used in conditions like cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, hypospermia, asthma, poor cognition, enterogastric pain, infections, and tissue damages. So if you think this video is useful, hit a thumbs up and share. Also drop a comment what you think of our video. And finally, if you still have not subscribed our channel, don't forget to subscribe.